Hi guys, in this lecture we will talk about Mason's rule which is normally used in alternative for uh, finding the transfer function for a block diagram without block diagram manipulation. First the block diagram is normally converted to a signal flow graph and then for that particular signal flow, gra flow graph we use Mason's rule or Mason's formula. So let's continue. The general formula for a transfer function by Mason rule is given by this relationship as we can see. We have 1 over delta summation from k equal to 1 to p mk del, del of k. So we can write that is 1 over del m1 del 1 plus m2 del 2 plus mp del p where k is the is equal to 1 to p represent the number of forward paths you will see what each and every term in this formula means del is something which is given by this relationship which is 1 minus sum of all individual loop gains either touching or non touching all of the loop gains are included in this part note down this summation sign plus sign sum of the products of loop gains of all possible combinations of non-touching loop taken two at a time so this is important taken two at a time and then sum of the products of loop gains of all possible combinations of non-touching loop taken three at a time and so on so this continues mk is the path gain of kth forward path suppose if we have one only one forward path this will become m1 and similarly delta k is for value of delta k for that part of flow graph not touching the kth forward path so we will use that uh, loop gain which is not touching the kth forward path so if we had one forward path we will say delta 1 so let's continue with some examples using this rule so that we can understand it Okay, we want to find the transfer function C of S or R of S for the given signal flow graph. The hard way is if we can go for the signal graph manipulation or the reduction of block diagrams, which was a tedious way to do this thing. We want to find the transfer function using the Mason's rule, which is the alternative to block diagram reduction or signal flow graph manipulation. So let's continue. So we have to find out certain things like we have to find out far path gains, loop gains uh, and uh, all these things that are included in this formula which includes delta, which includes delta k, which includes mk. So let's find out uh, what are the forward path gains first. So forward gains paths are is shown by this red line that is drawn over this given signal flow graph. If we see M1, since this is only one part, there is only one forward path, we can write the gain M1 or T1 equals G1, G2, G3, G4, G5. So all of them are in case key. In case key. So then the second step, in the second step, we are talking about the loop gains. If we notice in the given uh, single flow graph we have four loops first loop second loop third loop and the larger loop so we will take loop gains we will consider loop gains for all of these loops so g2 h1 is the loop gain of the first loop g4 h2 is the loop gain for the second loop g7 h4 is the loop gain for the third loop and similarly g2 g3 g4 g5 g5 g6 g7 g8 all or these this is the loop gain for the fourth and the larger loop step three will be we need to find out non touching loops taken two at a time so we have identified the three loops the, the three loops that can be taken uh, we will say loop 1 
suppose this is loop 1 this is loop 2 and this is loop 3 so we will take loop non touching loops taken two at a time these are all non touching they are not there is no not common in between these three loops so we say that these are actually non touching the definition of non touching loop is that loop which do not have a node in common so let's say loop 1 and loop 2 we take them together loop 1 and loop 2 g2 h1 is the gain for this loop and g4 h2 is the gain for this uh, loop and now loop 1 and 3 combination of 1 and 3 and we write the gains and then we th write the combination for loop 2 and 3 okay now uh, Going further, we write the uh, loop gains for non touching loops taken three at a time. Since we have three loops, we can write them all together loop one, two, and three, and writing uh, the gains for all the three loops. Then we need to find out delta, which was given by this formula, if you remember. So we have to write all these things in this formula so that we can find out delta. By writing all the gains, I can write this delta which is easy now because we have all the loop gains individual loop gains are summed here and then we have loop gains taken two at a time minus loop gains taken three at a time okay going further we have step four four b is we need to find out delta k which is obtained by eliminating all those loop gains from delta which do not touch the kth far path now if we look back at the diagram the signal flow graph diagram we see that this loop is not touching the kth forward path that if you remember this was the kth forward path and this is the loop which is not touching it so we will subtract subtract this loop gain from one according to the formula so what is delta the delta is one minus since delta k first for the first we have k is equal to one because there is only one forward path so we will write delta one and 1 minus g7 h4 why we are writing g7 h4 because this is the loop gain for that particular loop which is not touching this forward path now the equation is ready we will write the formula and find out the transfer function so this is how we obtain the transfer function using Mason's rule okay continuing with another example so that we have a deep understanding of the Mason's rule suppose we are given this a signal for graph we will see how many forward loops forward paths we have how many loop gains we have and so on uh, continuing in this fashion we, we need to find out find the loop and the forward path gains so first we need to find the loops l1 l1 is 2 3 2 2 is not mm, loop between node 2 3 and again 2 is one loop and its gain is minus h1 g2 loop 2 is i guess this one 4 5 4 and its gain is minus h2 g4 okay so we have two loops what are the forward paths the forward paths are two here so m1 first forward path for where k is equal to 1 so we have two forward paths we will say m1 1 2 from 1 to 2, from 2 to 3, from 3 to 4, from 4 to 5, and from 5 to 6, we have one power path. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And write its gain g1, g2, g3, g4, g5. And for the second power path, we have 1 from node 1, we go to node number 4, you can see. And then we go to node number 5, and then we go to node number 6. So we have 1, 4, 5, 6 which is the second forward path and its gain is g6 g4 and g5 as you can see here now we want to write the, um, the delta which was the formula by the formula 1 minus sum of all loop gains plus sum of uh, loop gains non touching loop gains taken two at a time and so on so we write 1 minus sum of all loops since we have two loops we are writing the sum of all these loops this is l1 plus l2 and then we take both since we have two loops and both are not touching non touching means they are not not having any node in common so they are non touching so we can have a combination of these two only there are 
no third loops we cannot write non-touching loops taken three at a time so we have l1 plus l2 if we use this relationship we can insert the gains that we had already and we can write that delta is given by this relationship now now we want to find the delta k which is is just determined by redrawing flow graph with, without path k since we have two paths we will be finding delta 1 and delta 2 so we eliminate the first path we remove it and we want to see which loop is not touching it since there is no such loop which is not touching all the loops both the loops are touching it so we say 1 minus 0 there is no gain which is not there is no loop which is which is not touching it so we will have 0 here delta 1 is 1 for the path 2 we remove the second path and see again we can see that this loop is now uh, actually uh, if we see this path is not touched by this loop okay so we will eliminate this loop again g to h1 from 1 so 1 minus minus g to h1 which is resulting in 1 plus g to h1 so the formula is now g of s m1 delta 1 plus m2 delta 2 over delta so we take m1 and multiply it by delta 1 which is 1 and then m2 which is this thing and which is multiplied by 1 plus g2 h h1 or h1 g2 same thing and then we write the value for delta so this is the transfer function that we obtained i guess you would have liked this video uh, this is the end of mason's rule uh, if you have any questions please put them in the comment section or you may send me uh, your questions on whatsapp my whatsapp group uh, which i will uh, share with you um, uh, you can also write your questions in the comment section thank you uh, thanks for watching